Hey guys, it's Julie and I'm giving you a quick glimpse at my finished product so you can see. Is this something you want to stick around for? If so, then let's start at the very beginning. Well, sorry, I guess it's not technically the beginning. You can see I did a little bit of stamp work there on Easter. I shared that on my Instagram reel, so if you're curious, you can watch that. But knowing that I have a pretty light week aside from Easter, I am coming through with these large number stamps from Carrie Bradford, and I'm allowing them to take up some of that extra space. I've mentioned in the past how I use my Studio Calico kits to kind of help set a color scheme for my month, and I'm switching things up. I am now just a subscriber for their stamp subscription and not any of their other kits. If I want to, I can pick up some washi because I'm a subscriber, so that's kind of slick. I can gather a few of their supplies. You'll see later in this video that I did purchase some stickers. They go nicely with the colors that I'm using here. So I think I'm gonna be really happy with this setup of getting the stamp every month, but then selectively choosing some of their little add-ons as I want and as I know that I will use them. I wanted to mention that this washi is from Allie Brown from her Etsy shop, and I don't know if it's still available, but if it is, I will link it below. Just quickly marking out the current week with my Tombow N89, and then sharing a peek at this cute stamp set. This was the April stamp of the month set from Studio Calico. It's designed by Inna Creative Bubble. She always has the best stamps. I like to include my week number down here in the bottom left corner. Creative journal pages can be a little overwhelming, like especially the way I approach it with absolutely no rhyme or reason. So for me, by adding the week number down here, it's starting to build a little bit of familiarity, a little bit of consistency. I definitely still shake it up from week to week and from month to month, like how and what materials I use to add the week number, but it's kind of like becoming a little habit, which is kind of nice and friendly. I'm a sucker for any type of like number date stamp set. So this one that I just showed you a quick glimpse of is from Carrie Bradford Studio. And I use that to stamp in April along the side there. I felt like that top open bar above the 14 was kind of, it was asking for something. So I went back and I looked at the stamp set and saw that they had some really cute little lines here that the, the text just fit perfectly inside that. So I, of course, stamp test or test stamp first because that's my my jam I, especially the text you don't know like is it going to be kind of blurry is it going to come out crisp so you'll notice that I do that periodically but I tested it and it looked cute so it says exceeded expectations sorry I repeat this every time but I use Avery sticker paper just matte like basically if you were shipping a postage label this is what you would print on that's what I use for my photos and I just mentioned that because I figure you know, some of you are new and don't know that information yet. Sorry for those of you who've had it repeated every time. But I just do that and I grab my little mini trimmer here and chop them up as best I can. I can come back with scissors if I need to. So as I start to lay these out, you're gonna see that the latter half of my week had a lot more activity, a lot more fun. My son came home, we did some fun things around Phoenix. And the first part of the week was probably just, you know, very low activity. So I kind of, I could definitely take these photos and space them out across the whole week. There's nothing that says that each photo has to be in line with the exact time period. I'm not that strict with this, but I also kind of liked the feeling of that. Like the first half of the week was a little slow and then look how fun and packed the second half was. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just like bulk it up over here and just let that contrast kind of be part of my story for this week. And if you wonder why I use the Avery stickers, this is why you guys, it's so fun to just stick them on there. They're super flat, not thick, so they don't create like a, a lip when I flip the pages and need to write on the back side. So those are all of my reasons why I love them and will continue to use them. Quality, not so much, but convenience, ooh yeah. Okay, we're heading into a section here that I could have potentially cut out, but I'm leaving it here just to show you guys like the full story, how much I just, you know, think, overthink, but I, I really, really, really wanted to use these cute stickers. These are part of the release for April from Studio Calico. So these are one of the things that I grabbed alongside my stamp set. And I just was determined to use them. I liked the pop of color. And then I really wanted to talk here because we took our son to the yard. It's like a crazy milkshake place. I don't know if you guys have one nearby you, but I'd seen it online and I was like, oh yeah, we, he would love to do that. So we did. And I wanted to just write in yard here um, and I am using these letter stickers and I am fussing and fussing and fussing and it's like by the time I get those in there then I realize they pretty much cover all the color that I wanted from the green sticker. So I changed my mind and just decide to remove them all together but then it leaves you're gonna see like a little rip on the sticker which then I can't get the sticker up. So then I just have to remind myself that oh my gosh Julie it's a creative journal page. This is not a work of art. It is not going on my wall in my living room. It is fine, move along. 
So I decided to pull out some white ink and just stamp a little stamp on top of that sticker. I thought it would be fun. It didn't work out perfectly. It's a little blurry and funky. I really struggle with pigment inks. They just kind of want to slide on the paper or the surface. I tested out a couple of more just to see if I can get a better image on it, a crisper image. Not that I could replace that one per se, just kind of playing around and yeah, still, you can see, I just struggle. One of my favorite things to do is to take stamps and to pair them into little shaped stickers that work. This one I end up cutting around, but it's just kind of fun to do something like that instead of stamping directly on the page. It gives us just a tiny bit more volume and space, and I'm so happy with this color. I love this ink and the color of these little stickers. They're, it's just fun to see it popping up across my pages. I like to stop, look at my page, think like, ooh, what color have I? I have I not incorporated yet from my little inks up there. So I take a second and pop in that little location tag with the citrine ink just to make sure that that color is represented. Transparent stickers are making me so happy and these labels are really fun. I printed out a bunch of different sheets. I've had some, you know, on my computer for years. And so I just went back and got some that would maybe go with this monthly kit that I'm creating myself. Um, I feel like stamping here, I want to take up a bunch of space because remember I said I didn't have a lot of plans from earlier in the week. So this is a really great space filler. I'm going to use this large text stamp, but I wanted it to kind of be housed on, on top of the label so it wasn't just floating on the page. Take it one step further and add this little like almost washi tape looking stamp and I just make it look like that little message was taped on to my page. This creative journal is basically the best place I can think of to just play with these new stamp sets that I get. I love to receive them, but you know, how many cards or how many things could you actually make that you'd really incorporate the use of all of these stamps? So for me, I'm just having fun, like taking them, sprinkling them all over my page. So you'll see in this week's layout that the stamp set was a huge inspiration. It was just me looking at all of the different pieces of the set and going, hmm, where could I put that? Hmm, where could I put that? Just finding uses and ways to incorporate them. Like I said, I cannot get enough of these transparent stickers. I took a lot of the in a creative bubble elements. I printed them onto transparent stickers. You can see a little stack there to, to the left side of my hand, but I'm adding in this golden color. I went ahead and just wanted to pair it there with the week number. So I cut off a little portion and then I'm just looking for a little spot to squeeze the, the part I cut off. I'm gonna add a little bit of journaling here. I have some room for that. And I did have a thought recently though about journaling. Like if I have a photo and the photo tells the story enough, I don't feel like I have to write about it also. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna kind of challenge myself on that because I think it's a natural tendency for me to be like, oh, photo here, journal about it to the side. And sometimes the photo doesn't need more journaling. So that is an opportunity for me to maybe squeeze in a random story that doesn't have a photo. So I have to kind of um, challenge myself for that because I'm gonna have to look back and you know maybe jot some little notes about the day because I don't take a lot of photos. So I need to remember those little moments even if I don't have a photo. I hope that that makes sense what I'm trying to convey. But basically like to me, it's a little redundant to have the photo and then to sit and journal about it. Unless there's something that's missing in that photo that needs to be told, I could use that space to talk about something completely different in some other little tiny you know moment from that week that I want to actually record with words, even though I don't have a photo. Ah, please comment below and help me. <laughs> tell me you understand what I'm talking about. Adding large elements here on the left page to help fill up some of that space. And here's an example of a story that I do not have a photo of, nor would I want to see the photo because basically my left eye swole up this week. And I think it was from my lash extensions. Oh man, I really, I'm hoping that maybe I could still potentially wear them, but basically I had a reaction on my eye. So I had to take off my lashes and it's kind of a bummer. I get used to them and they're kind of just fun to just always look cute in the morning and not feel like I have to put on mascara. I'm just really low maintenance like that. Anyways, um, again, looking for ways to fill some space here because I just don't have a ton from that week to record. So washi's repeating here. Just snag that cute little star shape and decide to just write down some tiny little tidbits from the week. So again, no photos, but that doesn't mean that the stories aren't worth telling or just kind of a recap of my week. And this is how I chose to do it over here. Just adding different colored little stars and some journaling. And that pretty much wraps up this week in my creative journal.
I'll come through and add on an April tab here. These are color theory monthly tabs from Studio Calico. And I just have them in this neutral color because I throw so much color down on my pages. But this is a quick way to find your way around your creative journal. And you guys, I hope that this was a little inspiring. I hope you want to grab some stamps and play with them on some paper and just kind of see if your stories can be told through this process. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you next time. Take care.